and they tried the same crap in Jordan, and they were more successful, successful in Lebanon. So the rest of the Middle East, they have no love of Israel, but they also have no love of the Palestinians, but they're very convenient. And so the problem is Egypt was never going to accept Palestinian refugees because, one, it's destabilizing, and two, why would they empower somebody they don't really like in Israel? So, you know, you can blame a lot of this on Netanyahu and his insane government, uh, but there's also this fundamental problem is, let's say, for example, Israel listened to Egypt, they, uh, October 7th was much more minor, they didn't go in and level the whole place, and, you know, there was no war. There's still no path to, to any sort of solution that makes anybody happy. And so, really, Israel's still in a position where they're like, well, one day they're going to try and maybe succeed at this massive attack. Like, we know they're going to try and eventually get to it. There's no path to peace. And on the Palestinian side, you can say there's also no path to peace. And yeah, but it was already done something. by Rabin. But they just canceled it. It was already accomplished. They just have to go back to that. I agree. Oh. You know, but they don't want to. That's the problem. Well, essentially, you have a failure of government on both sides, which has made conflict inevitable. But also, there's a cultural problem, which, uh, you know, there's in, you know, individuals of individual opinions. But if you look at most Jews and most Israelis, they go, we can work something out. But if you talk to most Palestinians, whether they're in Palestine or, or outside, they go, no, we can't really work this out. Well, how do you know? I lived with the Palestinians. I know that they're willing to live but that's why I say individually, with, it, with the Israeli. But just I mean, I lived there, you know. They le accepted me, you know, with no problem. Not even, you know, one person Especially tried to assault Palestine, me. the kids are indoctrinated. You, you see, like, these children's books, these shows, like, just... Yeah, but like, so are the Israelis. Out, character going, so like, are the Israelis. Okay, no, no, no just, they, they removed bad, any bad. sort of uh, anti-Semitic stuff from their books. I mean, UNRWA is pretty bad, but what I'm trying to say is, you know... Well, UNRWA supports the restoration of the uh, refugees, yes. Sure. They don't see a path forward, and the Israelis don't really see a path forward. But I think if you ask most Israelis, they're like, well, if we felt that there was a path forward, we'd want to go for it. And I think the Palestinians, maybe you can say because they're on the losing side, or because they're weaker, or because of how they've been raised, they don't really want a peace deal, um, they would settle, maybe, they, I think over, you know, if, if the past 20 years had gone a bit better for everybody, you could have negotiated them Look, culturally to, to settle. The problem is that they don't know how to set up, you know, like a peace, because they can only think in terms of a state, you know, the, the Zionists want to have a state, you know, for Jewish people, you know, for, and that, you know, only for the Jewish people, and the Palestinians no, no, no. think that they want to have a state, you know, for the Palestinians. And the Israelis will be there just as a you know minor sort of you know category, what about, like, the two a second class category. Israelis. Okay, I know that. That's okay. why I wrote my book on the federation, which each you know nation has their own government. You know, one nation does not govern the other nation, and they just share the land. And that's I all. I disagree that a federation is probably the the it's the way forward that doesn't require you to get the people in the area to all agree. You just do it, and that's yeah. how you manage it. Yeah. I think the problem is that uh, everybody who's trying to manage this conflict, whether external or internal no offense, but they're all in their 70s and 80s and 90s now, and they're kind of stuck in their ways, and they don't see a path forward, and they don't really want to, because, to be completely frank, uh, the Israelis are kind of winning, and they're going like, maybe we'll, we'll just kind of wipe them out, and then, you know, we'll be judged harshly, but in 50 years, it'll be a historical footnote, and um, that's unfortunate, and you should could, be trying to stop that. Yes, but also, you, you don't make that assumption, you know, because I think Hamas is winning. Well, they're in winning terms of the military conflict. they're not winning, but they made everyone hate Israel, and that was the real goal. Like, no, it was selfish what they apart did. From, apart 7th. from that, apart from October that, in totally terms of military, selfish. you know, like a, uh, a battle, you know, Hamas knows what they're doing. They've been preparing for this. This they, is a trap. So 9, this is like the Stalingrad. Hamas soldiers have died, and only a few hundred Israeli soldiers. I don't think that's really winning. Hamas is pathetically losing. But they're willing is, to sacrifice them. These they're, soldiers of Hamas, they have nothing to lose. They're orphans. Eighty percent of them are what orphans. I'm saying is what they did was they don't care if they, they knew, die. They knew what the outcome. But as long as Israel, they can, you know, take I'm, down some, you know, soldiers, you know, as well. Israel had to defend themselves. Yeah, you're both right in the sense that look, um, Hamas wants it more right now because they feel like it's do or die, and that's just it kind of is. So they're like, well, if we get killed by the Israelis, so what? Mm. Um, we also have to remember that the Israelis, though, have this overwhelming might. And the Israelis could back out now, and they could figure out a plan. I think they're being really reckless, because they could back out now, and it wouldn't really cost them anything, and they could, you know, figure out a plan later. Um, but, you know, Hamas doesn't really have anywhere to go. And so, on one hand, they're going to be, you know, more aggressive 
Yeah, they've but lost two, three thousand fighters, but they have thirty thousand total. They've lost, they've, they've lost uh, like around eight to nine thousand. Maybe, but still, yeah. they have you know thirty thousand. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you, uh, let me finish my point earlier. What they did is selfish. They knew that Israel would have to defend themselves. They knew how many Palestinians would die. They knew they, the only thing they would accomplish was just getting, uh, killing some Israelis. There was nothing to get from that. Like, I, I really just don't see the point unless they, they were just driven by genocidal hate. Oh. Nothing good was accomplished from October 7th at all. Well, they, they scuttled the Abraham Accords which was Israel making peace with Saudi. Yeah. Which, uh, that would have been oh, a big deal. Yeah. Well, I guess good for them. <laughs> That's well, why they did in, it. In certain ways. The, the that was actually, the timing of it. You actually, know? no, sorry. I was wrong. I take that back. They unsettled stuff between Saudi Arabia and they made most of the world hate Israel. So They didn't like, expect, you know, the genocide to take place. So, you know, that just is a consequence no of, of just Israel. Way too reckless and uncareful. Yeah, but... You know, even the, there's sufficient plausible evidence, you know, before the International Court of Justice. The reason it's gotten so bad so quickly is because uh, Netanyahu pulled troops away from the Gaza border to go uh, to protect settlers, settlers yeah. and that left them open. They then ignored intelligence like this, and now Netanyahu is stuck because if he backs down, his career is over. Yeah, so he, he wants it to keep he's going. He's a lot yeah. of Donald Trump. Like he, if, if he gets out of office, he's probably going to go to jail, and most Israelis hate him. Yeah, country. so we have a problem where... And this is, you know, for you, is that it's very hard because you want to say, you know, in the abstract, you can be very critical of Netanyahu, you can be very critical of his response to all of this, you can be really critical of how Israel is handling it, um, and that would all be fair in a sane world, but the problem is, uh, you know, a lot of Jews are going to get really defensive because they're going to be like, whoa, 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 are you just talking about a political quagmire, or is this some, like, delegitimization of Israel, you know, like, blah, blah, blah. And Not it's, of it's Israel, kind of spiral. but uh, of Zionism. So be really careful about that. Yeah, I, I'm, this is anti-Zionist, yeah. And there are anti-Zionists who are anti-Semitic, you know, like libertarians. But uh, anti-Zionism was the position of the Jewish Bund. And it was right, because it was the Jewish Bund that fought and won against the Nazis while the Zionists ran away. And they didn't help, you know, anybody else of the Jewish people. They just let, you know, Jewish people be collected and sent away. Both in Germany, for the sake of 60,000 Zionist members, and in Hungary for the sake of 1,843 or so that but were taken out of Hungary. You, why are, why and that was a you know, deal between the Zionists and the Nazis. Why aren't you, know, you like, against all the other, like, you know, oh, I think like over 20 other Muslim countries being Muslim countries? You think, uh, you think every country... Yeah, I, I'm not in favor of a theocratic state. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but the difference is it, Jews, I, I mean, I'm not sh totally sure if it was, but my guess is if a, if a Jew goes in into, like, Afghanistan or Iraq, do you think they would have, like, equal rights? Obviously, Arab Israelis have equal rights. Yes, because the example is in Iran. There's a Jewish community in Iran, isn't there? A yeah. lot of them got kicked out, but yes. Yeah, well, but they're still living there. No, there's um, still Jews there. There's a lot of Jews in Iran because no to uh, genocide. Iran was one of the few countries that didn't expel Jews in 1948. Oh, sure. um, now, you can say they had a cynical reason, but and it's not like the Jews in Iran have like full rights. I mean, they're as oppressed as the rest of the Iranians. Yeah. But, uh, but they have a, a, a delegated member of the parliament, yeah. a designated member of parliament that speaks as spokesperson for the, the Jewish Arab community. The Israelis are I like that. systematically oppressed, kind of. Well, I mean, it's, it's probably worse than black people in the U.S. now, but it's, uh, you could say it's similar. They have full equal legal rights, but they're just like... Dimmy, kind of, yeah, their status is under Dimmy law. Yeah, I know what that is. I would say, you know, the issue with Iran is right now Iran is Israel's enemy, but I think that's more so because Israel's is aligned with the U.S., who's Iran's enemy. Uh, you can say maybe there's Iranians that don't like the Jews, their, their whole religion is crazy, but whatever. The fact is that if you go back just 150 years, the Iranians had no problems with the Jews. And even when Israel was established, Iran didn't declare war against Israel. Uh, they were kind of just waiting to see what would happen. So I think one of the problems is Saudi, which is actually, you know, really the enemy of the U.S. and Israel, has, you know, economic alliances with them, and that pushes Iran away. And so what we're dealing is really like... Uh, real politic at this point, which is, you think Iran should be Israel's uh, ally against these fundamentalists in Saudi, but Israel is aligned with the U.S., which is aligned with Saudi, so they have to be against Iran. And that has nothing to do with whether you like their government, don't like their government, whether they're free or not. It's all about, you know, money and politics and how this works out. Mm. And that makes it really hard, because then you have this extra layer, which is, 
you know the culture you know what people think what